Hey everyone, ChromaFX Films here with part 4 of my Mixcraft tutorial series. Last time, I covered the basics of using virtual instruments. And in this video, I will cover more features and tools that Mixcraft has to offer, such as recording modes, using the automation tool, and recording with a MIDI keyboard. Alright, so what I have here is a simple tune I made a little while ago. Uh, it has two instruments right now. I have the main synth tune and then the electronic drum kit. The song is unfinished, but I'm going to work on it more in this video. So I'm going to play for you what I have right now so you can see what it sounds like. So I'm going to stop it there. This first part does not have a drum part and I'm going to write that using the uh, MIDI keyboard. So I can show you guys how that works. Uh, the second part, I do have a drum uh, loop here. I made this one, uh, yeah, drum loop. And then I duplicated it two more times and then I just put them together. And then I came up with this tune. And I used the metronome to uh, stay on beat. So I'll play this song with the metronome on. You can turn it by holding Alt and then P. And um, I have it uh, enabled here. You can set the settings here. See, it's uh, unchecked right now, and these are just the hot keys over here, Alt, uh, P, and Alt, O. So I'm going to play it with the metronome on, and then I'll show you how it sounds again. So that's what it sounded with the metronome on. Now I'm going to move over to the drum part and show you what that sounds like. So that's all I got so far, and I'm going to uh, add a few things to this and uh, use some of the features that I haven't covered yet. And I'm going to start, so we can uh, change the panning of the left and right speakers instead of just having it uh, permanently set to one side like we have here. Uh, I'm going to press this little button right here with the three dots, and I'll open up this third line here and you have this extra line here and you can click on the line it will create some more points uh, and what this is is where you can it's another way that you can control the track volume or the panning left and right and certain effects if you have them enabled and I'm going to change it to track pan right here and what I have it's set right now to center which is is 50-50 uh, on both left and right speakers and I'm going to change this a little bit so I'm going to make a shift back and forth so you can hear the difference if you're uh, listening to this in headphones you might hear it better than on speakers but nevertheless it's still there so I'm going to play this again and see if you can hear it so I don't know if you heard it but I definitely did and you can change that as much as you want. If you want to get exact points or uh, or the exact amount without just having to uh, rely on just dragging this mouse around or, or hoping, hoping that you are on the correct amount, you can actually, I'm gonna change this back over to track volume. You can right click the point and then press ex edit exact value and it'll load this uh, screen up and then you can actually change it um, to a, to whatever point you want so I can do this like point fifth point fifth. okay well it can only go to uh, the tenth place but that is good enough <laughs> yeah y any uh, less than that or any finer than that you wouldn't really hear the changes so you can play around with that it really helps when you're trying to get a more balanced sound uh, or if you're trying to go for an exact sound all you have to do Instead of just dragging, you just right click it and edit the exact value and then it can put it in for you. So on this third track, I have nothing uh, in the workspace and I'm going to pre press this button right here. It's gonna light up red. So the whole track is now red. That means it is enabled. 
and under this arrow I can select which channel for my MIDI keyboard and uh, this is the name of the keyboard and I'm going to as I already have it selected I'm just receiving from all channels right now and I have my keyboard plugged in and when I record I can press a couple of keys and you'll see them being recorded so let me try that now So I pressed these keys on the keyboard and I actually recorded these and I'm not sure if I hit a wrong note or not, maybe this one. No, I think it was good. So when I play this back, I'll just do this solo, this is exactly what I just played. So this, so what I just did there, within 10 seconds I just uh, added onto this song and that is just proof of how simple and quick it is to use uh, a keyboard rather than just using your cursor and just clicking all the notes manually because it really saves time and you can get uh, much more dynamic sounding music and if you have multi-sensitive uh, key keys on your keyboard you can get a light sounding notes and then heavy sounding notes because when you just use the mouse uh, it automatically sets it at a default velocity whatever you have it set to by default and that's why when you're recording you can have different sounds see as you can see here this one's a little bit lighter these are a little bit lighter some of these are heavier than others and that's where you can get with the keyboards it's very hard to get that when you're not using a real keyboard and if you just want to change it manually all you have to do is click here and drag and you'll see this blue line and then that just changes the the sound or the velocity automatically so you can play around with that I'm gonna set these all here or you can just click it click the note and then drag this bar and it'll automatically move up just slide up and down so both quick and simple I'm gonna change the sound a little bit here I'm gonna go down to the synth section alright solid All right, we'll stick with that. If we play the song now, I wonder what it sounds like. All right, that last part didn't sound right. I'll just take that out. Instead of deleting it, I can just shorten the uh, track so I don't have to hear it. That also saves some time. Plus, if you want to add it in later, uh, you can just extend it again and have it there and edit it. Or if you want to split the track, just right click and then split or just use control T and then you can just disable this. Uh, splitting helps when you want to delete certain sections midway instead of uh, deleting the actual no and then shifting everything over like deleting, oh, nope, like deleting this section and then grabbing this and then dragging it over. It's really annoying. So that's when splitting becomes helpful and it's all to save lots of time. And another thing is that whenever I record, so if I go back over to the section, I recorded this first track, and if I press record again, as you can see, it's recording over top, and that is a, that is a setting that if you right-click the track here and you go to properties, oh, sorry, you go to recording mode, uh, there are takes, overdub, and replace. Now, what takes does is every single time you record on that line, it just gives it a new line. So, there you go. As you can see, I get this second part. And again, every time I press record, it'll add a new one. If it's not uh, overlapping another instrument or another line. So, here it would be overlapping, so it creates another one. And then the other option is uh, overdubbing. And this just disables the previous tracks. And then replace is was the first one I had, and it just replaces the other sounds. But I have multiple tracks here, so it just chooses the latest one. So I'm going to just delete empty lanes, delete these, enable that 
and then again delete empty lanes or alt k so i'm going to just do oops just duplicate this drum loop here and just use it for the rest of the song and if i go to the mixer i can turn up the decibels the lower decibels on there give it more of a kick And it's not perfectly on beat because that was uh, just recorded with the keyboard. So if there was a slight delay or I happen to not hit the key on the right time, either one of those, uh, it will it will be slightly off beat. And this and I haven't really edited it yet, so whatever I hit was uh, exactly where it stays. Like here, I have a little wrong note there. And then that, and then over time, you can just go back and then edit the sound uh, to get the precise sound that you want. So that covers it for this tutorial. I hope you found this very helpful. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And in the next video, I'm going to be creating from scratch a techno slash synth song. And I'm going to show you all the steps. And at the very end, I'll put, if that song turns out good, I'll put it up for download for you guys if you want. So I'll see you guys next time and have a great day.